Hello. The purpose of this video is to help you get the very best out of your machine, to help it to last longer, and to show you how to look after it, and also to give you a few preventative maintenance tips. You won't find this in any of the manuals, nor in your machine instruction book, so the help starts here. There are three levels of maintenance, daily, monthly, and annually but there's no need to be alarmed. Before we get going, here are the tools you'll need. Not this chap, we'll come to him later. We have a half inch paintbrush, which preferably should have pure bristles to remove all the fluff from underneath the carriage and the main bed. Then we have the oil, which I recommend Bellador oil, because it's much cleaner and purer and won't cause damage to either your machine or your fingers. Then there's the lint-free cloth, because we don't want to put any more fluff back onto the machine. A small pointed pair of tweezers to remove fluff from the parts that other methods don't reach. And for the Japanese machines only, a small pair of sewing scissors to remove any frayed parts from the sponge bar a small pointed screwdriver, preferably a posi drive number one, and a six inch steel rule to make the measurements when we come to do the adjustments later. We have a glass jar with a close fitting lid, which we use together with the surgical spirit to clean the needles. A polishing cloth, which we use together with a foaming upholstery cleaner to clean the plastic. And last but by no means least, a long handled brush which goes the whole length of the machine and has a pure bristle head. This is available only from the Machine Knitting and Design Centre. Let's start with daily maintenance. This is the most important section of all and though we should be using a Knitmaster machine for example, it applies equally to all the machines. With your paintbrush, brush out the back rail here, underneath all the cams, and make sure that you get all the fluff out from here, and pay particular attention to this front foot here. Any fluff that's left in there could cause problems with your knitting later and in any case will cause heaviness in the action of the carriage. Having brushed it out, we then take our cloth and dry off all the old oil. In amongst all the cams and make sure that the base plate is clean and dry and again dry off the front foot. We then do exactly the same with the main bed. First of all, brushing it out along the front here where the needles emerge, across the top and behind the back rail. Again, having brushed it out, dry off all the old oil from the back rail, the main bed and the front rail. And give a quick wipe off along the needle butts. Next we come to re-oil it. For this we use the Bellador oil and because of its safety, being a vegetable base, it won't hurt your skin because I prefer to use my fingers to actually oil the machine. Just a couple of drops of oil to do each part, that is the front rail, just a light smear along the top of the bed, Another couple of drops for the needle butts and another couple for the back rail. Toyota and Brother machines are oiled in exactly the same way here, here and on the back rail but in addition they also need a spot of oil here and here 
on top of the grey plate at the back of the carriage. With the Singer and Passap systems, we still oil the needle butts, but we don't oil the top and bottom rails. This is done by oiling underneath the carriage or lock on those runners. In addition though, we also need to oil around this W shape on the pass up, along the edges of these two cams and across the top of them. Finally, a small amount of oil around these cams at the bottom here and across the tops of those two larger cams. This is the Bond machine. It's very easy to use and easy to maintain. So I'll cover all the maintenance points now. It's different from the Japanese and European machines because when we start to knit, we need to have the oil fresh on the machine. So therefore, make sure that you oil the points that I'm going to show you now. Using the Bellador oil, make sure that you liberally oil the key plate being used at the points where the metal of the needles will rub against the plastic of the key plate. That is around all these cams that I'm oiling now. In addition, you will need to apply a bit of oil with your fingertips to the back rail and a bit more for the front rail just here. When you come to the annual maintenance and you need to remove the needles, because of the construction you have to take care to follow a couple of points. Pull all the needles out and make sure that the latches are closed. Lift the tail of the needle out from the back of the machine. Then you can clean them in exactly the same way as we'll cover later in the annual maintenance section. Replacing the needles Always make sure that the latch is open. Then slide it in at quite a sharp angle underneath the sponge and using the fingers of both hands, lift the front up and slide it home. When you've finished using your machine, Always wipe off the old oil using your lint-free cloth. Wipe it off from the two rails, front and back, and from the key plate. Fluff build-up isn't a problem on these machines because there's nowhere for the fluff to accumulate. That brings us to the end of daily maintenance. So all we need to do now is to leave the machine covered with a plastic sheet or a tailor-made cover. OK, let's go on to the monthly maintenance now. Those of you with European machines, that is the Passap or the Singer, can have a bit of a holiday here because we're going to concentrate only on the Japanese machines. That is, the Knitmaster Silver, the Brother, and the Toyota. The first thing we do is to remove the sponge bar because we want to check it for any fraying and check the condition of the sponge. And if we compare it with the other two machines, we can see that the Knitmaster is hardly frayed at all, so we don't really need to trim that. The brother is quite badly frayed. There's some quite long hairs there and we need some quite drastic surgery. So we just 
trim off working from the far side and remove all the fluff. Then we turn it round and do exactly the same the other side. This way we won't cut into the sponge. With the Toyota there are just a couple of small hairs which need a minor trim. Again working from the far side just trim those off. But the main thing, if you look closely, you'll see that the sponge is quite badly perished. And it's no longer quite as springy as it used to be. Therefore, it's not holding the needles down properly. This one is getting very close to needing replacing. And to do that, we just throw the old one away and replace it with a new one. But don't forget to have a spare one before you do that. Next thing we do is clean out the front of the bed using our cattail brush. We put this in at the end of the bed in exactly the same place where we took the sponge bar out. We put it in underneath the needles and when you put it in make sure that you roll it towards you or towards the front of the bed. If it does get stuck a little bit on the, on the way in, just pull it back out gently and carry on twisting it in until it comes right out of the other end. On some machines, the brush comes out of the far end, all covered in all that nasty muck, and we simply take the fluff off it using our fingers and then take the brush back through. Don't worry if the brush doesn't come right out. All we do then is take it back out the same way and clean it off with your fingers before you carry on and put it back in and do that as many times as necessary until you can actually see all the way through the bed of the machine and can see that there's nothing left in there. The reason we need to remove this fluff is because it causes felting in the front of the bed. This not only causes a very heavy carriage action, but this felt holds dirt and grit which causes unseen damage inside your bed and that's a very costly operation to replace. So when's all, when all is done, we simply replace the sponge bar and you can either carry on knitting or finish off with your daily maintenance and leave the machine covered as you would normally. The biggest job of all is the annual maintenance. Now you mustn't shy away from this, that could be an expensive mistake. I'm going to show you a few tips so that you can save quite a lot of time. What we're going to do here is to take out all the needles and clean them. We're going to start by taking out 50 needles from each end and cleaning those and then 100 from the middle. When we come to put them back in again, we're going to swap them over so that the wear is evened out on the needles. First thing we do is take out the sponge bar. And then with your needle pusher, pull out 50 needles right out of the bed. Now you'll have to use the needle pusher to hold them while you brush the latches closed. Having done that, start by taking out two or three needles at a time. Just slip your finger under the tails 
and then you can push them up and out over the covers. When you get better at it, you may find you can do six or even seven or so at a time, but the more you do, the harder it's going to get. Just work them back and up over the covers. And here are 100 needles. Over here we have our needle cleaning kit. First of all, our lint-free cloth, our tube of oil, half a litre of surgical spirit and a glass jar with a secure fitting lid. Make sure that the jar is big enough to take the needles and that it has a nice wide neck so that you can get them out again easily. Start by tipping the spirit into the jar And to that, we add two to four drops of oil. Then just put the lid on and give it a quick shake to mix the oil with the spirit. Then we can put our needles in Put them in hook down and try not to drop any. There we are. Put the lid on and make sure that it fits properly and it's nice and tight. Then pretend you're shaking up your favourite cocktail. Shake and not stir. Okay, when we've done that, you can take the needles out and put them onto your cloth. Leave your needles on your lint-free cloth to allow the spirit to evaporate off. When it's all gone, you'll see a few bubbles of oil on there, but leave them on there, don't wipe them off, because we'll need that in the machine to oil inside. Do exactly the same with the other hundred needles, but don't forget which are which. If necessary, use another cloth. That way you'll remember, because when we put them back in, if you remember, we had to change them over. While the needles are drying, we can then use some of the spirit on another cloth and just lightly dampen it and use it to wipe off any oil staining on the metal parts. Don't get it on the plastic, it can damage it. Then we take our polishing cloth and pointing the spray away from the machine, just spray a bit of your foaming cleaner onto it. Then use that to polish off the plastic and when you dry it it'll bring it up shiny new. Don't forget the carriage of course. It'd be a shame to leave that out. Having done that we're now ready to put the needles back in again. When we put the needles back in, make sure the latches are open and leave them in the holding position at the front of the bed.
with the final 50 needles in, the last shortcut is to use your thumbs and a few at a time push the needles down against the spring pressure and back. All these tips together can save you as much as 15 to 20 minutes. Having done that, we simply replace the sponge bar and re-oil the machine as you would for daily maintenance. If you're not going to use the machine again, don't forget to leave it covered. The European machines are slightly different in as much as they only have 179 needles on each bed. Therefore, you have to take out about 45 needles from each end. The most important thing to watch for is that the latches are always closed when you take the needle out and likewise always open when you put it back in again after cleaning. This is because this spring under here is very easily damaged. Let's turn our attention now to the wheel brushes on the sinker plates of the Japanese machine. We need to make sure that these brushes are turning freely so that they don't catch on either the yarn or the sinker posts and cause problems with your knitting. So simply take your screwdriver, remove the screw, and lift off the whole brush assembly. Take out the little felt washer and get rid of it. And simply replace everything in the reverse order. Make sure that the washer lines up just before you tighten it down. That's the Knit Master and the Brother, very similar and not very much problem. The Toyota is slightly different because these tuck brushes towards the centre have a movable post which, when you take the screw out, has a tendency to drop out. So you simply put your finger underneath there to hold the post in place while you undo the screw. and take off the brush. Replacing it is exactly the same in reverse. And then tighten up the screw. Quite easy to do, but very important. Because, as you can see from this brush here, the fibres have become matted and hooked over. And when they're like that, they quite easily catch the yarn and cause loops either at the end of your rows or even in the middle. When that happens, we need to replace the brush completely. This little chap here can often cause us a lot of problems because he's made of mohair. And mohair is a particular problem because the fibres fill up these cuts and cause them to get jammed. These masks are often out of sight and out of mind, stuck up above you, but don't forget to do it, because the first thing you'll find is that this tension wire will just fly up, out of control, and you've lost all your tension. So regularly clean out the cups so that you don't get this problem. With this knit master tension control, it's very simple to do. Simply remove the center screw, lift off the whole assembly, and then using your pointed tweezers, pull out any fluff that's in there. Not very much in this one. Don't forget to do inside the inner cup. 
because even fluff here can cause problems. Reassembly is the exact reverse. Put the plastic cup on, line up the centre cap, and replace the screw. Very simple to do. The Toyota is slightly different though. Make sure that you always hold it like that, holding the outer plastic cap around its edges because when we take the screw out and lift off the cap you'll see there's a tiny little ball bearing there with a spring underneath it. What I tend to do is just to lift it off and pop it onto the magnet which is underneath the carriage. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Just lift the cover off, and there we can see quite a bit more. Take your tweezers, and pull out all that fluff that's in there. With mohair, you may have to do this several times in the course of a garment, because it does build up very, very quickly. Don't forget, underneath the inner cap, lift out all that fluff that's in there. Again, replace it in reverse order. Don't forget your little ball bearing. Just pop it in its place and put the cap back on. Just twist it slightly to line it up on its post. Then again, hold it in place replace the screw and tighten it down. You should then have a nice series of clicks which correspond with the little marks on your wheel. Quite easy to do if you're careful but vitally important. Remember this little chap here well, he's made of fair isle, and you may encounter a few problems when you come to knit him if this gap here between the sinker plate and the sinker posts is incorrect. If the gap is too small, you'll find that long floats get knitted in together with the main stitch, and you'll end up with two colours showing up on one stitch. If the gap is too great, you'll find that you're getting tuck stitches when you're not even knitting a tuck pattern. To adjust this, we'll need a six inch steel rule with metric graduations. And we lay this on the sinker plate up against the sinker posts. To adjust it, we have three screws here, here, and here. We just slacken off these screws just enough to allow the plate to move. Place your ruler up against the sinker posts and check the gap, which should be one to one and a half millimetres, or about two millimetres on chunkies. When the gap is correct, check the gap is parallel all the way along to the inside of the plate. When you're satisfied that it's correct, tighten up the screws 
and finally check the gap again to make sure the sinker plate hasn't moved. That's all there is to it. Very simple, but vitally important. When using the river, we need to be aware of the height and the pitch in relation to the main bed. If the adjustment isn't correct, that will cause problems with your stitching and also the operation of the transfer carriage. We're going to start with the Knitmaster and then go on to the Brother and the Toyota. Though the adjustments are slightly different on each machine, the adjustment is checked in exactly the same way. To check the height adjustment, pull out four needles on the main bed at each end. Then using your steel rule, place it underneath the needles and on top of the sinker posts of the river. To adjust the height of the river, there are two nuts at the back of the river at each end. Using a 7mm spanner, slacken off only the lowermost one and using this small lever here, just to the inside, to lower or raise the river as necessary. The adjustment is correct when the ruler just slides up and down and just moves the needles, but the end needle doesn't drop off the end of the ruler. Having done that, tighten the nut and do exactly the same at the other end of the river. The pitch shouldn't need adjusting very often. However, if you do a lot of rucking patterns, you will have to keep an eye on it. This is checked by putting your pitch lever to the H position and pulling out four or five needles across the bed. Any of the needles should be directly above the corresponding sinker post. As you can see, this sinker post is slightly to the left of the needle. To make the adjustment, slacken off the two crosshead screws, which can be found at the left-hand end of the river, just below the bottom rail. Then lightly tap the river until the sinker post lines up with the needle. Tighten up the two screws and that's the adjustment complete. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust the Brother Rivers. This is the Brother 830 but the, both the 830 and the 850 are adjusted for height and pitch in exactly the same way. Again we pull out the four end needles at each end of the main bed and place the ruler underneath the needles and on top of the river gate pegs. And again, just move it side to side to check the gap. To make the adjustment, lower the bed right down at one end first of all and using the river tool supplied with your river, slacken off the adjusting nut which is found right at the bottom of the bracket at the back. Raise the bed again, replace the ruler and then use a little lever which is just outside the nut and, the cl and is clamped by the nut to lower or raise the river until the adjustment is correct. Then, holding this lever very tightly, carefully lower the bed and retighten the nut. Again, raise the bed and recheck the adjustment to make sure that it hasn't slipped when you lowered the bed or tightened up the nut. If necessary, 
Repeat these steps until this adjustment is correct. However, the 830 has one further adjustment. This is checked by raising the four end needles at the end of the bed on the river this time and placing the ruler behind these and in front of the gate pegs of the main bed. Again, there should just be a light grip on the ruler. Should this need adjusting, slacken off the C-clamp at the end of the bed, slacken off the thumb screw on the river bracket, and adjust the topmost nut on the river bracket until you have that light sliding fit. Lower the needles, tighten up the thumb screw, and retighten the C clamp. To adjust the pitch, again, have your pitch lever in the H position and check using one of the needles above the gate peg. If it should need adjusting, the two screws are on the left-hand end plate and you can use the screwdriver end of your river adjustment tool to slacken these off, tap the river until it lines up and retighten the screws. And that's all there is to it. The height adjustment on the Toyota is made with two nuts at the end of the river at the back of the bracket. Slacken these off. And normally, all you would have to do is raise the river right up, hold it, and retighten the nuts. The pitch adjustment is made with two screws to slacken off here and at the far end here. You'll have to look for them because they're quite high up. Just slacken those off, tap the river to line it up and tighten up the screws again. And that's all there is to it. This is the Passat colour changer. And what we're going to adjust now is this return cam here, which presses against the return lever and parks the bobbin up in its out-of-use position. Then the next bobbin can pop up and be picked up. However, this particular machine, the cam is out of adjustment because it is rattling over all the parked bobbins. So to adjust it, we take it off the machine and with a flat-bladed screwdriver, slacken these two screws underneath the return cam and move it slightly away from the bobbin. Tighten up the screws. And just check the lock for ease of operation.
And now you can see that there's no rattling over those return levers. So important do's and don'ts. With your emitting machine, don't use baby oil. It's too thick, it contains lanolin and water, and it's just no good at all. Don't use methylated spirits. It contains a purple dye, which when it evaporates off, leaves a powdery, gritty, abrasive dust. Most important of all, don't ever use silicon spray. Don't even use it on the yarn, because it gets caught in the latches and jams them up, and there's no real way of cleaning out the latches at all. The only thing you can do is just throw the lot away and buy new ones, rather expensive. Do always keep your machine covered with a good quality cover, either polythene sheet or a tailor-made cover. Very important because it keeps any airborne dust and grit away from the machine. Do treat the river as a second machine. It's exactly the same as the main bed, just in a simpler form. So do everything to that as you would for the main bed. Do always have the machine serviced regularly. Have it serviced by a qualified engineer because they will be able to check for any faults inside the machine and clean out any dirt that you can't see inside it. Thank you.